Good morning and, and welcome to the 2017 BC Hockey Phantom Tier 3 Championship webinar. I uh, just want to thank you uh, for taking some time out of uh, your Saturday morning to join us here. Uh, what we're going to do is, is go through some uh, important information uh, to make sure you're fully prepared and, and, and ready to go uh, for the championship that's been hosted in Cranbrook. They, they've done a, a fantastic job in their planning and they're excited to, to have everyone um, uh, come to Cranbrook and enjoy a, a great experience. So we're going to go through a few things here. Uh, if you have questions, you're welcome to enter them into the chat uh, box as uh, we go. And at the end, uh, we'll answer them all and, and allow you to answer them or ask questions then as well. Also, you can, at any point uh, moving forward, uh, you're welcome to email championships at bchockey.net. And this information or questions there, we can get back to you with uh, with information. So my name is uh, Sean Orr. I am uh, work within the events and uh, leagues department here at BC Hockey, and uh, have been working with our uh, host committees for the past uh, six or seven months. So the first thing that we want to point out to make sure everyone is aware of is uh, the host information package. So if you go to the BC Hockey website and you click Programs to Championships, click Host Info at the top, scroll down to find Bantam Tier 3. This document there is full of information. Uh, if you haven't looked at it already, I highly recommend it has information on the facility, accommodation, what to do when you're in Cranbrook, um, even down to restaurants and where to get your skate sharpened. So this information is will help you through the week and help you in your planning and you, your final planning as you go to uh, we're about a week and a half away. Um, also within it, there's a contact information for uh, for the host committee. Um, you can reach out to them at uh, at any point and, and there, or reach out to us through the general email account. We're, we're more than happy to, to work with you and provide you with the information. But make sure you check it out. I, I recommend having a copy with you. Uh, having access to a copy uh, should something come up and you need information right away. The schedule. So the Bantam Tier 3 schedule, first I'm going to tell you where you can find it. Obviously, champ Programs Championships, click Schedule Scores, and then on the top left there, it'll bring you to that screen and click Bantam Tier 3. And then on the screen on your right is what it's going to look like. So this isn't the Bantam Tier 3 schedule, uh, but the schedule will look in the same format. Also, you can go on, download the BC Hockey mobile app, go into the score section, select uh, Bantam Tier 3, and the information will be posted there as well as uh, live stats to the championship. So the Bantam Tier 3 championship is an eight-team event. So this is a four-day championship. It's going to be broken into two pools of four. So everyone's going to play a three-game round robin. Based off of the round robin play, um, you're going to um, have the first and second team, the seeded teams from the round robin will advance to the semifinals. Um, with that being said, uh, the, the first team from Division A will be the, play the second team in Division B. First team Division B play second team Division A. From there, the winners play in the gold medal game, and uh, the losers of that game play in the bronze medal game. Um, so that's the schedule. Uh, it's uh, posted up there, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask now, or you can email out to us uh, through our championships uh, email account. Certified rosters. So this is a this is an important one that we want to make sure you double check and, and everything is ready to go um, before you get to Cranbrook. So we kindly ask you go to the HCR, log in, check your team, make sure that all your players and team staff are listed as approved are the ones that are attending. Only these players are allowed to take part in the championship. If a player is listed as an eligible coach listed as ineligible, a bench staff listed as ineligible, they are not allowed to participate. So we ask that you go in there, um, you, you take a few minutes to double check and then you have the peace of mind that everything's in place and, and you're ready to go uh, for the weekend or uh, for the event I should say. Uh, in addition, uh, this is going to be addressed as in the coach managers meeting so every team 
our sorry, our, our host uh, representative is going to have a copy of everyone's roster, and they're going to review this with you, and you'll sign off on the roster. So, by checking it now, you'll make sure you're set um, in the lead up to um, uh, at the championship, and making sure you're good to go. It's uh, take a few minutes, make sure you're set, and double check it, you're good to go. The equipment checklist. So this is an real another really important item um, that we can do. Uh, beforehand to make sure that that you are set as well as your team so on the first on the home page of championships if you scroll all the way to the bottom you'll see where it's, there's a, a hyperlink it says equipment checklist I've included a picture in the top left corner to show what I'm, I'm talking about you click that link it takes you to the document uh, on the right side of the page this document is a checklist that each of our representatives are going to go through with every player prior to their first game to make sure their their equipment uh, meets our safety uh, our st standards and makes the standards to make sure the player is eligible. So we ask that you send this out to your parent group this week so everyone is aware of what we're looking for and what needs to be in place for the equipment because if there's anything that needs to be uh, touched up or fixed we can do it now. It's much easier to do it now as opposed to um, prior to a game and you're scrambling to make sure a player is able to play. So pass this along, make sure they're aware of it, of it and, um, and if we do that then everything will be good to go and, and there will be no concerns uh, leading into the, the first game of the championship for, for everyone. The coach managers meeting. So this meeting it takes place on the day before uh, the championships. Uh, the meeting has been organized uh, by the host committee. Um, the BC Hockey representative is going to lead the meeting. Uh, there will be the host committee chair will be in attendance as well as the officiating supervisor. Uh, each team attending, it's mandatory to have at least one representative attend. We highly recommend that the, both the coach and the manager attend so they're receiving the information. So with this meeting, what's going to happen is uh, the uh, BC Hockey rep is going to serve as the lead with the event or for the, the meeting. They're going to run through a, an agenda and basically it's going to touch on all the information uh, needed and around the event uh, to make sure everyone is aware of the standards, the expectations and, and what, to, what they're looking for. So this is a chance to ask any questions um, before we get going into the games and this is a chance to, to get a better understanding of, of what to expect. The host committee chair is there to serve uh, as a resource to provide any information on logistics, answer any questions uh, that may come up uh, that's outside of the scope of the game and um, that uh, they'll be there and since they've been the one putting all the plans in place. The officiating supervisor uh, will be there uh, to uh, communicate to you uh, the standards and the, the, emphasis, the rule emphasis uh, so everyone's aware of it. They'll uh, communicate that hockey can, the playing rules are used within the championship for the duration. If there's no overtime in round robin. Overtime is only used uh, in semifinals and medal rounds. The overtime format is, as per Hockey Canada rules, uh, immediate 10 minutes on that period uh, if there's no goal there's a flood and there's another 20 minute period and then that repeats until a goal is scored. Finally uh, documents that uh, are going to be need to need to be signed uh, by everyone by each team is a, a fair play code for your, your players your team staff and your parents and this document is going to outline the expectations um, that we've placed on everyone of their behavior uh, on and off the, the ice. Um, we want to create a positive environment to, so, it's a, so it's a fantastic experience for all the players uh, as well as the coaches and the parents. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone understands what these expectations are. They've read them and they've signed off on them. So everyone will be asked to sign this document and I think it'll go uh, with everyone understanding that uh, we want to create this positive environment that They'll go to the experience for all the players. We understand that it's a uh, it's a very competitive uh, week. It's a uh, it's a championship, and everyone's playing for for a banner. But at the same time, we want an emphasis of uh, creating a positive environment uh, on and off the rink. 
so that was what we wanted to cover to, to point out and, and make sure everyone was aware of. Uh, are there any questions at this time? Okay, hearing none, uh, thank you for your 15 minutes this morning. Uh, we appreciate uh, you giving up part of your morning. Uh, good luck next weekend. We hope you have a fantastic event, and we know you'll have a great time in Cranbrook just from the work that the host committee has done to make sure you guys are set up. All right, thank you.